Hello and welcome to this 6.3 guided tour of Westminster along the riverside. This is a combination of three of the five runs that I've done in this area and it will look at going past the London Eye, the South Bank, the Houses of Parliament and Victoria Embankment Gardens. What you'll see here is a content page so I've broken this down into the relevant sections so you can quickly get to the parts that you need but there'll also be another area where you can get different breakpoints to consume this at your leisure. So the general format is that we start off with a history section looking at this part of London in 1560 which is the Tudor times which is when Henry VIII and Queen Elizabeth I was around as well as Shakespeare and then we look at it in 1850 which is the Victorian era where Dickens and Darwin was around and it was almost at the height of the British Empire. In each section I'll give a bit of a local history on each of those sections of the run and then we'll look at what that run would look like if you were running it at speed of over 20 kilometers an hour. Then I'll give you a 360 orientation very quick and then we'll look at the different sites along the way. There's going to be six sections which goes from Westminster Bridge to Embankment, from Embankment to Waterloo Bridge and then from Waterloo Bridge back to Embankment, Embankment to Big Ben by the London Eye. Then it goes around the Houses of Parliament from Westminster Bridge to Lambeth Bridge and then from Lambeth Bridge back to Westminster. So let's have a look at the start point of the run. We can see that we're going to be just outside Big Ben. We've got London Eye in front of us and Big Ben behind us and Houses of Parliament. And the idea is that we start and end at this point and we'll pass this about three times along the route. So this is the start point and we're just going to go down and see the rest of the route. Just in terms of navigation, we're in the centre of London. We have Buckingham Palace on our left hand side. We have the shopping district and Covent Garden, the entertainment district above us. And then to the top right hand side, we have the City of London. OK, so we're going to go through and show you this at speed. We start at Westminster Bridge, then we go along Victoria Embankment, all the way down to Embankment. Then we go along Golden New Jubilee Bridge, along the South Bank, across Waterloo Bridge, then back into Victoria Embankment Gardens, and then back across Golden Jubilee Bridge, past the London Eye, then to Westminster Bridge, and then we go right around the front of the Houses of Parliament to Lambeth Bridge, then we come across Albert Embankment, and then back to Westminster. So now you know what route we're going to cover, we're going to start to look at the history of the area. Now if we go back to around 1500 we can see a map here of what London was like at that time. Notice how small it was and that's because at the time there was only about 70,000 people in London. Now if we have a look at this one it's surrounded by the wall of London, this is London Bridge, but the palace Westminster Palace and the run that we're going to do is right on the very edge in this sort of green belt area which is in a sense St James's Park but the palace is just in this far corner. You can see what we would normally think of London as such as St Giles and Hyde Park and Knightsbridge and up towards Regent's Park area. Well that's all countryside. Now we're quite fortunate when they started to make maps of London in the olden days they tended to make them more 3D. So we have some good examples of what London might have looked like in 1560 and Victorian times which is what you can see here. But let's go and have a look at London in just a bit more detail and show you what the runs would look like if we overlaid them on different eras in London. So the first map that we show is around 1560. So it's the crossover really between when Henry VIII had died and Queen Elizabeth I was coming to the throne. So just in terms of dates, Henry VIII was on the throne from 1509 to 1547, and we had the Reformation, which is a split to the church, in about 1517. Now, between 1547 and 1558, there was Edward VI, who was very Protestant, and we had Queen Mary, or Bloody Mary as she was called, which was very Catholic. 
And then when Elizabeth came to the throne, she tried to get a balance and she was on the throne from 1558 to 1603. And just to put in context, when Shakespeare was around, he was actively doing his plays between 1565 and 1613. And the great event that happened at this particular period was that the Spanish Armada tried to invade us in 1588. The next map that I show here is from about 1750. You can see that Westminster Bridge had just been built and you can see that we have Westminster Abbey, very prominent. A lot of the buildings at this time obviously would have been smaller, so this would be where the Houses of Parliament are. Uh, it would have been the old Westminster Palace. This would have been all Whitehall Palace along here. And then if we move a bit further along, we can see as we go towards Waterloo Bridge that this is what the North Bank would have looked like. So this is Savoy Place around here, and this would have been about where Embankment would have been. So in this period that this map was produced, we are in the Georgian era. So this is about when George II was around. Uh, so we're 25 years before the American War of Independence. There's only one bridge between here and London Bridge, and that is Westminster Bridge. And Whitehall Palace, which we can see on the previous map, had burnt down in 1659. So the whole of the Royal Palace had actually moved at this point all the way down to St. James's Palace, which was in St. James's Park near Buckingham Palace. The next period of history we're going to look at for this area is in 1851, and we can see how the routes is changed considerably, and also the orientation of the map has changed. So we're now looking from the north, looking south. So we have Trafalgar Square here, we have the Houses of Parliament to the north, and then we have Waterloo Bridge down to the south. So during this period, we have Charles Dickens. He started his literary work in about 1836 with the Pickwick Papers. We also have Charles Darwin and his theory of evolution in 1859. London and the British Empire was going forward in, in strides at this particular period. We had the Great Exhibition in 1851 in Hyde Park. And the Industrial Revolution was going on all around the country. But you'll also see that the Houses of Parliament down in here are not look quite looking the way that we see them today. And this is because they'd only recently burned down in 1834 and they were in the process of being rebuilt. And at this particular point, Big Ben and Elizabeth Tower had yet to be built. So when we move to this particular picture in 1889, we could see that we have the Houses of Parliament as we see them today. And the bridges that you see are Westminster Bridge. We have the Hungerford Bridge. We have a train station here. We have Waterloo Bridge towards the end. And we also have Embankment, which has just been built on the north side of the river. And these are some of the views that you can see today. This is taken from the London Eye. So this is just looking out towards the west. So this is the Houses of Parliament tour, which goes around the Houses of Parliament, across Lambeth Bridge and back again. As we move around, we can see the start of Victoria Embankment. And then we look out towards the Ministry of Defence, Horse Cards Hotel, and out towards Buckingham Palace, looking out directly towards the west. And up in this particular direction is Oxford Street and all the shopping district. And then we move a bit further around and we've got the entertainment areas and we've got the Hungerford Bridge and these are the Golden Jubilee Bridge surrounding it. And then we're out towards Waterloo Bridge on the right hand side and then looking out towards the city of London. OK, so let's go and start the first part of the route. There's six parts in all and this is the first part going from Big Ben to Embankment Station. Just a tiny bit more in the way of history. So we're really just going to be going along this route here. And this is a map from 1560. And you can see that we have Whitehall palaces, mainly all in this particular section. And then we go past Scotland Yard, which was where the Scottish kings had their London residence. So this is a royal residence we could see in Whitehall. And just at the top left-hand corner, we can see Eleanor's Cross at uh, Charing Cross. 
which is now the site of King Charles I's statue. You'll notice that on the south side, it would have all been marshland. If you look at this map from 1851, we can see the old Westminster Bridge, and we'll be starting at this particular point next to the Houses of the Parliament, which had just been constructed, and we'll be going along the front of Old Whitehall Palace, but this would have been all government buildings at this time, up until we get to Hungerford Bridge, which would have just been created to link the south side of the river to the north and Hungerford Market, which would have been here. And there's just a couple of other maps in here just to show you the difference in terms of how things have changed. So this real map, we're starting from this particular corner down in here, just going up. You can see how the buildings have increased between the two maps, but it's also this map shows you when we had the embankment put in. If we compare the two maps, you can see that the River Thames had been squashed in. This enabled it to flow a lot quicker. It was able to get rid of all the effluent that was being put into the river more effectively. And we'd also had sewage systems added at this time, as well as the railway lines. Finally, this map shows where the embankment was currently laid. The ones in blue were the first phase, ones in red were the second phase. And you can also see that we've got the Houses of Parliament built in here, but you can also see where Tate Britain is. We also have Millbank Prison. And you may know that the British are sometimes referred to as POMs in Australia, which some people have said means prisoners of Millbank, because this was the main prison where they used to transport prisoners out to Australia. And here's a couple of pictures of Somerset House, which we'll see later on, as they're starting to build the embankment, and this is what it looked like when it was finished. OK, so now we're going to have a look at the route as if we were running it at speed. So a quick look at the map. We're just starting at this start and finish, and we're just really just going to go this first part of the blue part down to Embankment Station, so it's relatively simple. So if we show this going at speed, we start off facing... Big Ben and we go down the steps and this is Victoria Embankment. We just go past the station and the places where you catch the boat and then we just go up by the telephone boxes past the Norman Shaw building which was old Scotland Yard. And we're going to have got to see New Scotland Yard just in front of us and then when we get past the Battle of Britain Memorial we go through that and cross the road and then we go into the park right next to the Ministry of Defence buildings, where we've got a number of statues which chart a lot of these to do with the RAF at this particular point here. And then when we cross the road here, we'll be in Horse Guards Avenue, and there's an entrance that we go into Whitehall Gardens. And then we just follow this around. We have Horse Guards Hotel in front of us. There's Whitehall Place. And then when we get to the end, we'll be at Northumberland Avenue, as we go through onto Northumberland Avenue, we'll have the Golden Jubilee Bridge to our right, which we're going to go to later. So we're just going to Embankment Station, which is the end of the first part of this run. OK, so here's some of the sites that you'd see along that route between Big Ben and Embankment Station. This map just shows you general sites along the way. We'll just be touching on a few of those. To help you navigate, there's a 360 pictures here. We're just outside Big Ben. And we go start the route with the London Eye on our right hand side and we just go down Victoria Embankment. As we get down there, when we're basically opposite the, the Ministry of Defence building, as you can see we're swinging around, we've got the London Eye in front of us. We just basically cross the road to the right hand side, you'll see New Scotland Yard. And that will bring us into the, the park next to the Ministry of Defence. We just go straight to the end and then we cross Horse Guards Avenue. As you can see, there's two buildings in front of us straight into the gardens here and then we will have the Royal Horse Guards in front of us and we just go right to the end till we get to Northumberland Avenue and then we'll just cross the road from Whitehall Gardens so we've got the Embankment Place in front of us and the Playhouse Theatre to our right and we just go towards there and then we'll just end up by the station and uh, that's where we're going to start our next part of the run. But before we do that we We'll show you some of the sites along the way. So at the start of the run, we have Westminster Bridge, which was built in 1750. It was the first bridge between here and London Bridge. As you can see, it's green, which represents the colour of the House of Commons. 
However, the bridge you see today dates back to 1862. We'll come back to Westminster Bridge later because we see it several times during this tour. The next we see is Portcullis House. Now we have a portcullis on the Houses of Parliament letterhead and this design is supposed to reflect that. It holds about a third of the members of parliaments and it was built in 2001 so it was sympathetic with the House of Parliament and the Norman Shaw building which is the old Scotland Yard on its right hand side. Now if we look at the Norman Shaw building this was called New Scotland Yard because if you remember earlier we had an area in Whitehall where the Scottish kings had their residence. Now when they moved out the Metropolitan Police originally had their headquarters there and they still use some of it today for their horses. So Scotland Yard moved here in 1891 and it stayed there until about 1967 when it moved to Victoria and now it is back next door to this in Curtis Green which was opened in 2017. It's slightly ironic that when they were building this in 1888 they found a body of a woman and they'd never solved the case and it's known as the Whitehall Mystery. Also quite interesting that the very turrets at the top of this building is where the commander of the Metropolitan Police used to have his offices. The view of the South Bank with County Hall and the London Eye looks really good today, but it used to be a very industrial area. But now it has lots of entertainment there, so it's well worth a visit. Next we have the Battle of Britain Memorial. This was created in 2005 and opened by His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. And it's there to commemorate the Battle of Britain, which took place between June and October in 1940. The actual sculpture is done by Paul Day, and you'll also see another one of his works if you go to St Pancras, and that is called The Meeting Place. This is quite an RAF-type area, because we have the RAF Memorial, which was put up here in 1923, which represents the efforts of the Royal Air Force, which had only just recently been established during the First World War. Now, the MOD building was actually built on the Privy Gardens of Whitehall Palace, the private gardens of Whitehall Palace when Henry VIII was around, and includes within its design the wine cellars that were part of the palace that Henry VIII built. Now, there's a lot of memorials in here to the Korean War, to Iraq and Afghanistan, but there's also quite a heavy influence on the RAF. So there's the Air Fleet R Memorial, which focuses on the flying corps that supports the Royal Navy, as well as we have Hugh Trenchard and Charles Portal, who are also influential in the RAF. Horse Guards Avenue, which we see here, just links embankment to the Horse Guards Parade. And halfway down you see that there is a memorial to the Gurkhas, who have been an important part of the British Army since the 19th century. Whitehall Gardens was built as part of the Victoria Embankment in the 1875. And the building that you see in front contains the Liberal Club, Horse Guards Hotel, as well as the Farmers Union. Now the hotel has only been there since about 1971, and it has links, as you'd think in the name, Horse Guards Hotel, to the military as well as the government. As we hit Northumberland Avenue, we see the Corinthia Hotel, which, when it was built in 1885, was called the Metropolitan Hotel. But it too has government links because it was requisitioned during both World War I and World War II, and it has connections with spies and James Bond. This particular hotel, the Corinthia Hotel, was opened in 2011, so it's a great place to have Vesper Martinis. Across the road from that is the Playhouse that was built in 1882, originally called the Royal Avenue Theatre. This also has some great bands playing, such as Queen, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. If you look across the road next to Embankment Place, you'll see a small green hut. These are the cabman shelters. They came in in 1874. They were put up all over London through the endeavours of the Earl of Shaftesbury to make sure that the cabmen could get a hot meal because they weren't allowed to leave their carriages. But luckily we do have 13 still in place around London, worth looking out for, and this is one of them. 
The big building you can see above the Playhouse Theatre is the Embankment Place, which is basically the back of Charing Cross Station, which is now offices and retail. But the place that we're going to go up next, the next part, is the Golden Jubilee Bridge Stairs, as you can see on the right-hand side. And that will be the main place when we start part two. In this second part, we're going to go along the south bank from Embankment Station to Waterloo Bridge. So this part of the route is new in London terms because it was formed around 1951 for the Festival of Britain and it has remained an entertainment section since then. If we have a look at the South Bank Circular route, you can see it's in two parts. One on the blue section is what we're going to cover now and then the black section when we get to the end of Waterloo Bridge is the reverse section which is going to be relaxing in embankment gardens. Having a look at all the sites along the way, you'll see there's a huge amount of entertainment sites along this side of the river and for things to see. So if you look at the Elizabethan map of 1560, you can see that the South Bank is quite marshy. There's not very much going on there at all. And obviously the Waterloo Bridge hasn't been built, so it's not very much happening. If we go forward 300 years to 1851 in Victorian times, you can see at the top here we have Westminster Bridge has been built, we've got Waterloo Bridge has been built, but we've also got Hungerford Bridge, which was a footbridge linking the north to the south. Now, in this map, which actually goes from looking from the north side towards the south, you can see that the north side is still pretty well built up with, again, bigger houses. But the south side has become very industrious. We can see that we have brewery here for making beer. And next to it is a lead shot factory. In fact, two lead shot factories to produce shot for the armaments. And as you can see from this picture, looking across the river with Waterloo Bridge on our left, you can see the lead shot tower here. And they used to make lead at the top area here, boil it up and then drop it down this big long column and that used to form like raindrops forming round pieces of lead and if you wanted thicker shot you used to boil the lead at the midpoint and then drop it all the way down into a vat of cold water and as I said the brewery for drinking the beer when they were thirsty was just on the right hand side of that now you can see this a bit more clearly in this map of 1845 you can see the brewery here and we can see the two lead shot towers at this point but you can also see that Somerset House has actually been built into its current form and you can also see the Adelphi which if uh, look at a, an older picture is what it used to look like in the 1700s and just for comparison there's a few more maps here showing what it was like in 1795 you can see there's some industrialization going along on the south bank but used to get quite a big sandbanks here which was quite problematic in terms of flooding and then as we move along to 1827, just before the building of the embankment, you can see the river is still pretty wide, but you can see how quickly it narrows when you get down to 1869. You can see that the Victoria embankment on the north is being built, but there's nothing on the south bank. That wouldn't have happened until 1951 when we had the Festival of Britain. So that gives you a history of the area. Let's see what this would look like if we were running it at speed over 20 kilometers per hour. So we start outside Embankment Station and we go th through Embankment Place and then turn left past the cabman shelter on our left and then up the stairs to the Golden Jubilee Bridge. Now you can see the triangular arches that represents what the old Hunkerford Bridge used to look like when it was a suspension bridge. And then to our right, you can see the London Eye and you can also see the Houses of Parliament. And that big square building in front of you is the Shell Building. Uh, there's a lot of more developments there that have gone up now from when I took this run. When we get to the end, we go down the stairs. But instead of going straight, uh, we turn back on ourselves and go underneath the bridge. And then we'll be, have the Royal Festival Hall on our right hand side. And then views over to the Shell Mex House and Victoria Gardens. Then we've got the skateboard um, and a graffiti place underneath there with the Queen Elizabeth 
and Purcell rooms above. And then we then go round and show the National Theatre. And then we go at the side of that before we get to the British Film Institute, which is just the other side of the stairs here. We get onto the top of the bridge and we just go straight along towards Somerset House, which is in the far distance. On this side of the river, you get some great views across towards the, the city buildings, but you also get some great ones back towards the Houses of Parliament on the right-hand side. And then as we get towards the end in here, we're going to go down a, um, a set of stairs to end up on the Victoria Bank, which you can see just coming on your right-hand side. We're going to show you some sights along the route, and we've got some 360 pictures to help you find your way along it. We start this from the other side of Embankment Place because I think if you were doing the run you were to come from across the road and straight up the Golden Jubilee Bridge rather than going back into Embankment and coming out again. And then as we can see from here we would have come out through that station there and would have the playhouse in front of us as well as the Horse Guards Hotel in front and we just go straight up those stairs that you can see in front of us. And then when we get to the end of the bridge, this is what you'd see. You'd see the wheel in front of you. And we just go down to the bottom of the stairs and do a complete turn around. So this is the way we're going to be facing. But we'd have come down those stairs and then just turned uh, around and just come through the bridge. And when we get out the other side, we'll, we'll come down quite close to where the Royal Festival Hall is, which is very difficult to miss. So we've got the views over the river. And then when we get to the skate park, you may not see this sand here, that's changing in summertime, but you've got the skate park to the right and you've got the Queen Elizabeth halls above. And then we get to the National Theatre and then this is what we can see, you've got a huge building here. The British Film Institute is just before we, just further on from where we get up the stairs. When we get up to the stairs, this is our view, this is a view back down to the, the National Gallery, we've got the Hayward Gallery across there and the IMAX Theatre at the very end. And then we just basically just go straight to the very end of this one and that will be the end of this part of the route. But we go down to this area below and that's where the Victoria Bankman is going to go from. We're going to go under the bridge to get to the part three of the route. So let me show you some of the sites that you'll see when you do the South Bank route. There's a lot of cultured entertainment on this part of the route and we start it here with a picture of the golden jubilee bridge which was opened in 2002 there's two sides of it this side which is has views towards the houses of parliament and then the other side has views towards the city it's supposed to reflect the original hunkerfen suspension bridge with the suspension arches but the interesting fact is that when that footbridge was originally in place, that the cables were moved across to the Clifton Suspension Bridge. The main building that we have here, after we go and see the views across the river, is the Royal Festival Hall. Now this is a large building, it has about 2,900 in terms of capacity. It's on the site of the Red Lion Brewery. You'll see later, you see the code line when we get to the end of the London Eye section. The main building on this part of the tour is the Royal Festival Hall. Now this was instigated in about 1951 from the Festival of Britain and has remained here ever since. It's 2,900 capacity, it's got theatres, it's got dance, it's got music, it's got bars and it's a great view along the top to have a view over the river. This particular view is taken actually on Waterloo Bridge Associated with the Royal Festival Hall is also the Queen Elizabeth Hall and the Purcell Rooms. Now the Purcell Rooms is, uh, Purcell was a 17th century composer, British composer. And this has both music and concerts venue. Just to the side of that is the Haywards Gallery, which has been there since 1968 and is well worth a visit. To contrast that, there is their own art gallery underneath the Queen Elizabeth Hall, which is the Undercroft, which is a skate park, but the artistry there is all about graffiti. And then when we go underneath Waterloo Bridge, we then see the Royal National Theatre in front of us. Now, this moved from the Old Vic in 1976, and it has a lot of varied performances from both new and contemporary artists. 
Close by to that is the British Film Institute, sometimes known as the National Film Theatre, and this has both classic and independent films, as well as non-English films showing there. It's also got galleries and shops and restaurants, and it has recently been revamped in 2007. You will also see at the corner, but probably better in this other picture here, is the BFI London IMAX theatre, which has a huge screen of 20 times 26 metres across. And that's actually built within inside the roundabout. The final part of this leg is to go across Waterloo Bridge. And you can see how Waterloo Bridge looks today and what it used to look like when it was built. It was established in 1817, which was a couple of years after the Battle of Waterloo, hence why it changed its name from the Strand Bridge to Waterloo Bridge, partly influenced by Wennington. However, when they created Victoria Embankment, it meant that the foundation started to get eroded a bit quicker than was originally planned because the river was flowing a lot faster and therefore it needed to be rebuilt. They started in 1939, but then the war meant that it had to be delayed. It was the only real bridge to actually be bombed during the war. However, the people who built it and constructed it were mainly women at the time, and that is why it's called the Ladies' Bridge. It's also considered to be one of the best bridges to get views of London because you can see both the City of London as well as the buildings around Westminster. So that finishes the second part Part three of this tour basically goes back towards Embankment Station from Waterloo Bridge, as we can see from the map shown here. So this is going to be much more relaxing because it will be going through Victoria Embankment Gardens, basically. But we will be finishing at the station, not going back up to Charing Cross, as it's shown here. Now, whereas there was nothing in 1560, there was a lot going on in 1560 on this side of the river. Obviously, you had Savoy Palace, which had been built in here. You had Somerset House on this side and you had Durham House as well as the Whitehall Palace towards this side. So this is where nobility had their houses fronting the riverside. The map of 1775 actually shows Somerset House as it looks today. So this is the, the new building that was created more for government departments. The Savoy had become a hospital and was quite dilapidated at this stage. And the rest of the buildings along this side had become more accommodating from the ever-growing size of London. And then we can see how things changed when they put in the Victoria Embankment. Now, as we see, it's just a blank space in here, but once they'd pulled the embankment and put the roads and the trains in, then built parks along the space that was in between. And this is a quick map of some of the sites that you could see along the way. We start the run at the top of the bridge. And we go down a set of stairs and when we get to the bottom, we turn right and we go underneath the bridge, past the IT building. And then just as we start to go along here, there's a turn on your right hand side, which will bring you into Victorian Bankman Gardens. We go along here till we get to the Savoy River entrance. Then we go out towards the Cleopatra's Needle along Victoria Embankment. And we go around, take a look at the view, take a look at the Sphinx cross the road again and then go back the same way as we've just come and we take the first turn in on our left hand side back into Victoria Embankment Gardens we've got the Shelmex house on the right hand side we've got a cafe come up here on our left and then it opens out past Robert Burns statue and then we head down towards the York Gate and then around the corner past the bandstand and then back out into Villiers Street and the Embankment Station where we stop. Before I show you the sights along the way, I'm going to show you a few 360 pictures to help you along the way. So we start this section with Somerset House in front of you, the stairs that we're going to go down and that's the road that we're going to end up to, which is Victoria Embankment. And this is just a sort of view about what you could see around you. So we go down the stairs and when we get to the bottom, we turn right. We go under the bridge and this is what's in front. We've got the IT in front of you there. This is the bridge that we've just come through. And we're just going to go into the gardens where it says there's Savoy there. There's a small little gate. This will bring you into Victoria Embankment Gardens. And uh, this is a picture of the 
Savoy, the Riverside entrance, and this is where we've just come from, and we're just this is where we're going to go. And um, at this particular junction, we're just going to go out onto the road itself. So that's where we just come from. We're just going to go out there towards Cleopatra's Needle, which you can just see. Um, this is just a view of the road, looking quite empty. Okay, go around Cleopatra's Needle, and this is what it should look like, um, with uh, pictures of the river in front of you. So as we swing around that, we just end up going back the same way as we've come, which is just, but this is a picture looking the other way around. And then when we get back into the gardens here, we turn right and uh, head towards the cafe. It's basically going past the Cleopatra's Needle there, so we can see the cafe in front of us. And then we've got Robert Burns in front, and that's the where the old Adelphi used to be. And then we get back to York Gate. Uh, this is what where the river used to come up to before they built the embankment so you can see how far it's come forward and then there's the station in front and we're just going to come back and end up at the station just through the by the bandstands and that's uh, the start place for the next part of the route and that's what we've just come down come through and that was Villiers Street you just saw up the top there. The first building that we see is Somerset House which was given to the Duke of Somerset in 1547 by by Henry VIII's son Edward VI and he built the house but then he had his head chopped off in 1552 so it was taken back to the crown and made a royal palace. It was rebuilt again in 1776 but it became a government building and the architect was uh, William Chambers. The entrance you can see from this side is the river side entrance and you can go through into the main entrance and see the fountains here but the main entrance is in the strand and there's also the entrance to the Courtauld Museum but again like many places in London there's a lot of exhibitions in here as well as places to eat and drink so it's also well worth a visit. When you get down the stairs and go along and go under the bridge you'll then see the IET building which is for the Institute of Engineering Technology. It was originally for the physicians and surgeons when it was built, but it was made famous by Michael Faraday, who was looking at electromagnetism and electrolysis in the 1850s. So he is one of our famous inventors, and not surprisingly, this be then became the Institute of Electrical Engineers. One of the more interesting monuments in the Victoria Embankment Gardens is the statue to Sir Arthur Seymour Sullivan. He was part of the duo of Gilbert and Sullivan. Sullivan was the composer and Gilbert was the dramatist. They were made famous for their 14 operettas, such as the Pirates of Penzance. Now there's a close connection between this statue and the Savoy Hotel because Richard Doyley Cart was able to build this from the profits that he made from the Gilbert and Sullivan plays. It was the first hotel when it was built in 1889 to have electricity therefore the connection with Michael Faraday just up the road. It wouldn't surprise you to know that the Doily Cart hired a manager called Caesar Ritz who went on to establish the Ritz Hotel on Piccadilly but again it was all about quality and service. Before we turn down to see Cleopatra's Needle we passed the statue of Robert Rakes who was the founder of the Sunday School movement, which became a crucial working class institution and a centre for mutual aid and association amongst the ever-growing population inside London. Now, although Cleopatra's Needle looks like it's been there for a long time, it was only established in 1878 after the embankment was built. But it actually dates back to 1460 BC to the pharaoh the III, it was brought from Alexandria, which was Cleopatra's city, hence the name, and it was there to signify the victory over Napoleon in 1815. Now it's also quite ironic that the vessel almost got lost when it was coming across in 1877, just at the Bay of Biscay, which is just around France. However, it was found and it was successfully put up, and there is in fact a time capsule buried underneath it, which includes children's toys and pictures of the pretty women of London. You'll also see that there's Cleopatra Needles Sphinxes just as you exit 
back onto Victoria Embankment, where in front of you you'll see the Belgium War Memorial, which was donated for the help and assistance in World War I between 1914 and 1918. Keeping on the theme of memorials, you'll also see there's a very small statue called the Camel Corp, which was also associated with the First World War, but it was to do with the campaigns in the Middle East, where we had a number of campaigns. And this was a special force of British and Australians and New Zealanders fighting on camels. One of the buildings that you see along here is Shelmex House, which was opened in 1931, but on the site of the Hotel Cecile, which you can see in the bottom left-hand corner. As the names imply, it was a headquarters for Shell Petrochemical Company, and its clock face was actually known as Big Benzene at the time, and that is now known as 80 The Strand. Finishing off this tour, we go past Robert Burns, who was the National Poet of Scotland, and he was born between 1759 and 1796 and is the pioneer of the Romantic movement. We then see your gate, which we saw earlier on the run, and this was originally fronting the River Thames. It was built by George Villiers, the Duke of Buckingham. And you can see the immense distance in terms of land that was reclaimed when they built Victoria Embankment. And as we come out of the streets, we actually hit Villiers Street, which is named after George Villiers in 1626, which is when he built the York Gate. And Villiers Street goes all the way up to the Strand. And Charles Dickens had to work at Hungerford Stairs, just nearby here in 1812, because his father was in a debtor's prison. And this is where he met a friend called Fagan, which appeared in his book in Oliver Twist. And that ends this part of the part tour. four of this 6.3 kilometre photo run goes from Embankment Station to Big Ben via the London Eye. Now when we cross over the Golden Jubilee Bridge we turn right and that will give us a different set of entertainment, more in terms of amusements with the London Eye, the London Dungeons. So if we go back to the 1560 map, just looking at the route we take, it would basically be marshland and not very much in way of buildings at all. Now contrast that to moving a bit further on in terms of the 1845. You can see that the whole of the route is completely full up with factories and wharfs, very busy and congested. And you can see that development over time from 1795 to 1869. If we look at the map of 1869, and we can see there is quite a lot of development when the Victoria Embankment was built on this side of the river, but nothing was built on the eastern side where the London Eye is. We had to wait until the 20th century for that to happen. It happened with the old county hall being built in 1922, just by Westminster Bridge. And then we had the Festival of Britain, which developed a bit more of the area around where the South Bank is. But then we had to wait until further developments were done in the 70s and up to the end of the 20th century for this area to start to be fully developed. And as you can see from the map today, there were quite a lot of developments and entertainment slots around this area. But before we go into detail, let's show you this part of the route running at speed. We start outside Embankment Station and then we go through the station and then turn immediately right and go up the stairs to join the eastern side of the Golden Jubilee Bridge. Both sides of the bridge are similarly designed. Both have fantastic views. And as we look now towards the east, we can see that it has uh, a great skyline of the city of London. And then as we get towards the end, we can see the Royal Festival Hall coming up in front of us. And there's going to be a set of stairs which we're just going to go down. And then as soon as we get down to the bottom, we're just going to turn immediately around and go under the bridge. And then we'll be facing Westminster and the London Eye. That's we start to come into view. 
We're going to make a slight detour because we're going to go into Jubilee Gardens. This was this was recently developed in 2012. And then we've got uh, a great view of the London Eye and we've got County Hall to our left-hand side. But it also gives us good views over towards the Houses of Parliament. Now on here we have the first building we come across is the London Eye. Then this next section here is for the London Dungeons. And then we have uh, the Shrekic Adventure and then we also have Sea Life. And then we come out towards the end, we go up the stairs, past the Code Lion, and then turn right onto Westminster Bridge, which is painted green to reflect the seats in the House of Commons. We've got good views on both sides of the river. It might not be easy to do this because they built barriers on each side to, uh, for public safety. And then we have the Portcullis House on the right and, and Big Ben. And then we stop here right outside Westminster Station. So before I talk about the sites along the way, I'm going to show you a few 360 degree photographs of the route to help you navigate along the way. So this is a full list of some of the sites you see along the route and then as we look at the embankment station in front of us, we basically are going to go through the basically the entrance hall and out the other side. And as soon as you get out the other side, you'll see that you will have the stairs in front of you to take you up to the top of the Golden Jubilee Bridge, and you'll have the busy embankment in front of you. Now on the bridge, as I said, you can get some great views of the, the city, and then you just basically go right towards the end and there'll be a set of stairs as you come uh, along and it will you'll see the Royal Festival Hall will be in front of you. As soon as you get down to the bottom, we basically do a complete 180 degrees and then we've got the river in front of us. We just go under the bridge again and then we'll be in front or in front of the London Eye. Just do a quick tour around the Jubilee Gardens and then go past the London Dungeons until we get to the steps at the end. And then once we're there, we can go up those. We've got the code line on the left-hand side. And we've got the London Eye just behind us, an old county hall. And then we're just going to take a beeline for Big Ben, which is in front of us. And then we're on the bridge you can go either side of it to, to look at the different views, but there will be barriers in the way now from when this was picture was taken. Uh, just swing around and then we just head towards the, the station entrance just at this particular junction, which will then finish this part of the photo run. OK, in terms of the sites, we'll see we've got Embankment Station, which was here in 1870. It was originally called Charing Cross. It's got two levels. The first level is where the district line was put in when it was first constructed, when Victoria Embankment was laid out. But then it has a, a deeper underground network for the Northern Line, which was opened in 1914. The next thing we see, which we've been on before, which is the Golden Jubilee Bridge. Again, you've got good views of the South Bank and towards the city. And it was opened in 2002 and its basic design is to reflect the old Hungerford suspension bridge. When we get to Jubilee Gardens, this was really only developed in about 1977 as a public park. Before that, going back to the Festival of Britain in 1951, it had been the Dome of Discovery. Now this has had a couple of developments over its lifetime and it was redesigned in 2012 for the Olympics, and it's looking as it does today. The London Eye is one of London's landmarks now. It is a Ferris wheel. It did open on the 31st of December 1999, and it was called then the Millennium Wheel. It was supposed to be a temporary structure, but with 3.75 million visitors every year, it has now passed its 20th birthday. 
In terms of dimensions, it's 135 meters tall, that's 445 feet, and it's 120 meters wide. And it goes around at about one mile an hour. The number of pods do have a significance. They do represent the boroughs of London. And you do get some great views across towards the central London from this particular perspective. I always find it's best to do it where the sun is behind you rather than having it right in front. And as you can see from the pictures that follow, there's a few of the views that you can see going from the Houses of the Parliament all the way down to the, the city, which is basically the route that we've took today. As you approach Westminster Bridge, you do get some good pictures of the Houses of Parliament when it's not crowded in scaffolding. And as you approach the bridge and go up, you will see the Code Stone Lion, which was atop the old London Brewery. The other lion, because there were two, is in Twickenham. And originally it was red because the brewery was the red lion. It's actually made of artificial stone. That's why it's called Code Stone. And that was invented by Eleanor Code in 1769. So we get towards the end as we're going towards Westminster Bridge. Been across this a few times before. It is green to represent the House of Commons. It was built in 1750, but this dates from 1862. And it is the second oldest bridge in London, the oldest being in Richmond. And as we get towards the end, we do see Queen Bodica or Bodicea, as I was always taught. She was queen of the Iceni, who were indigenous people to England or to East Anglia. And she made and she attacked the Roman on several occasions in Colchester and in London in 61 AD. But eventually she was defeated and uh, legend has it that she was buried underneath King's Cross Station, apparently quite near Platform 10, nine and three quarters maybe. The final thing we see of this part of the route is Big Ben, which is the clock atop the Elizabeth Tower. This is a relatively new name. It used to be called the Clock Tower, but this is the Elizabeth Tower to reflect the Victoria Tower, which is further up river. It first ticked in 31st of May, 1859, and it has not really chimed since the 21st of August, 2016. And if you go to the end of the run, you will see a video of the, its last chiming on that date. And we'll be discussing more of the Houses of Parliament, or the Palace of Westminster as it's called, in the next section, which takes us from Westminster Bridge to Lambeth Bridge. The first part takes us up close to the Palace of Westminster as the Parliament, and then out towards Lambeth Bridge. And the second part basically shows it from a distance as we go along the Albert Embankment. There is a lot of information to talk about the Houses of Parliament, probably too much for this particular section. So I will create another podcast which will go into the building of it, the why it's called the Palace of Westminster, the fire and the rebuilding in the 19th century. So look out for that one when it arrives. You'll also find there's two palaces in this final section. There's Westminster Palace, which was the King's Palace and later the government's. And then we have Lambeth Palace, which was for the Archbishop of Canterbury, his London residence. Now we get a bit of an idea about how this has changed over time when we look at the map from 1560. Now it's quite interesting to see from here that the two main structures that are still around are Westminster Hall and St. Stephen's Chapel. And those two are in fact still integrated with inside the Houses of Parliament as we see today. But at the time, they would tend to be standalone buildings. When this map was put together, there'd recently been a fire at Westminster Palace and Henry VIII was moving all his court down to Whitehall Palace, which was down here. It was bigger and it, it suited him. He just needed to get rid of Cardinal Wolsey, which he managed to do, and then take over his property. But he was left with the question what to do with the buildings that he had vacated. So he gave those to the Parliament at the time. And this area suited him quite well. Notice there wasn't any bridge at this time. This is just in there to give you an idea about where the bridge would have been. But it was suitable for him because he could go off and do his hunting when he wanted to. Or he could go off to the city or 
visit anyone he needed to from this particular position. It's quite easy to contrast this area on the left to the right where there's only Lambeth Palace. If we move on to this map of 1750, we can see that Westminster Bridge has just been laid out. The Westminster Abbey is very prominent. It's just had these two front areas built onto it, but the Palace of Westminster or the Houses of Commons is a scattering of buildings, but you can still see Westminster Hall quite prominent in this particular position. The layout of the Houses of Parliament or Palace of Westminster at the time could be described in English terms as higgledy piggledy and as we have a look at the maps here as it sort of like develops you can see all the different buildings as they move off in time and then when we look at the building in 1827 this is only about eight years before a fire destroyed a large part of the palace of Westminster which was actually started because they needed to get rid of some tallow sticks which was a form of ancient accounting and they put them all into a fire in the Palace of Westminster but it caused a chimney fire and then it destroyed a large number of buildings in that vicinity. What it didn't destroy was St Stephen's Chapel and Westminster Hall so when they went to rebuild it Charles Barry who was the major architect at the time incorporated that into the overall design. There are two main players in the rebuilding of the Houses of Parliament. One was Charles Barry, who was involved in the overall design and getting the space right so people could move around easily. And there was Augustus Pugin, who was very instrumental in terms of giving it the Gothic look. It'd also be quite interesting to know, those people like Downton Abbey, that Charles Barry also did High Clare Castle. Now, one of the interesting things, if you just look at the 1869 map, is you can see that in order to build the palace, they had to extend into the river. And this was quite revolutionary at the time. And in fact, there was an awful lot of sophisticated building work that went on when they built Minster Abbey or the Houses of Parliament, including doing scaffolding on the inside, because that was a more efficient way of building up the structure in a very confined space. We can see the overall design of the Houses of Parliament a bit clearer here, and where the clock tower would be positioned. And you can see how the outline of the Houses of Parliament was continued when they built the Victoria Embankment. An alternative view of the Houses of Parliament, it was built up in this time in 1845. You could see that there was no Lambeth Bridge at this particular point, And this was because the only way to cross the river here was via a horse ferry. But we'll discuss more about that later. And here we have a picture taken in 18. 89, showing the Houses of Parliament in all its glory, very much as we see it today. We can see that only part of Victoria Gardens is in place. So this part towards the west will be developed at a later date. We can see Parliament Square, quite a bit different to what we see it today because it doesn't have this line in the middle. And there was a number of developments around this area to the bottom left, which included aquariums and a hospital. On the other side of the river we can see elements of the St Thomas's Hospital and over here we've got Lambeth Palace. So let's see what this run would look like if we were running it at speed. There's a couple of start points. You can either start on the bridge or just after the bridge at the train station entrance that is opposite the Elizabeth Tower and that's where we're going to start this run from. When it's Convenient, I'd take the opportunity to cross the road, or but you could go to the very end and then cross the road then, depending on the traffic situation. So we start at the station, and if we can cross the road, we'll have the railings on our left-hand side. When we get to the bottom, we're going to go into Parliament Square, which will then give us good views of the House of Parliament, stroke Palace of Westminster. Then we have St Margaret's on our right-hand side. Then we go next to St Westminster Hall and then as we come out from there we've got Westminster Abbey and Henry V's chapel on our right hand side then we've got Victoria Tower in front of us and then we get on to College Green just on the right there was the dual tower and we're basically just going to cross the road at this point and then go into Victoria Tower Gardens 
plus past Emily Pankhurst. And then we've got the Verges of Calais just on our left, another sculpture. Some good views that we can get if we go down to the riverside and see uh, across to St. Thomas's Hospital and Lambeth Palace. Uh, then we can go back into the park itself and then we've got the Buxton Memorial Fountain on our right hand side and then we get to a small playground and then we come up to Lambeth Bridge with Thames House in front of us which will be where we'll finish this part of the run. So as you can see from this diagram there is a number of things to see along the route but before we do that we'll just show you a few 360 degree pictures to help you navigate your way around this part of the photo run. Okay, for this start position is showing the Big Ben and the Portcullis House. We're basically going to be starting off with the entrance just where it says Bridge Street. That's the entrance where we're going to start from. Uh, we cross the road. Uh, this is going down the left-hand side, but we could cross it beforehand. But we basically want to go across here to what is called Parliament Square, which is very easy to see because it's going to be the square in front of the Houses of Parliament. And then, as you can see, we've got the main sort of views in front, government buildings over there. We've got uh, St. Margaret's and Westminster Abbey in front. As we get to this particular point, we've got St. Stephen's Hall to one side, and we've got Henry the Seventh Chapel on our right-hand side. And we then go through the gap into College Green, where we can see the Victoria Tower and the Henry Moore sculpture and we're just going to cross over the road uh, basically where it's pointing to Victoria Tower Gardens and you'll see there's a little entrance into the park this is where Emily Pankhurst statue is and then as we go into the park itself it'll take you right up to where the Buxton Memorial Fountain is we've got some good views over towards St Thomas's on the other side and Lambeth Palace but we just head right to the very end where there's Thames House and the Lambeth Bridge and this is the view you see to finish this part of the route. So in terms of the things you see along the way there is Westminster Station which came here from 1868. It was originally called Westminster Bridge Station and at the time it had a steam operated district line. There have been a number of redevelopments during its lifetime. The latest was in 1999 when they built the Jubilee line and this also has a link to Harry Potter in the Order of the Phoenix. You can see them coming out of the station but the magical thing about that clip is that you see them coming down an escalator to go out which is quite a difficult thing to do in a tube station. And here we have another view of Big Ben and the Elizabeth Tower. As I said, it uh, first ticked on the 31st of May, 1859, and the bell chimes in E. You'll see in the courtyard by Westminster Hall a picture of a man on horseback, and that is Richard I, or Richard the Lionheart. Like many kings up to the Georgian era, they often were involved in battles, and they often led battles in this country and abroad. So... Richard I was king in 1189, so not long after William the Conqueror, and he was involved in a number of campaigns, his most famous being the Third Crusade, where he spent a lot of his reign abroad. He was also Duke of Normandy, and Duke of Aquitaine, and Duke of Gascony. He was Lord of Cyprus, Overlord of Brittany, Count Anjou, and... He was also reported to have met up with Robin Hood. So he had quite a large portfolio of countries to visit. And this was not unusual in terms of the kingdoms in this part of history. Here we see him next to Westminster Hall, which was established in 1097. And this was by William II, or William Rufus, who came after William the Conqueror. And at the time, it was the largest hall in Europe with a hammer beam roof and it's been used for various activities including the law courts and one of its biggest trial was that of Charles I who lost his head during the English Civil War. So here we have the back of Westminster Abbey 
This is actually called the Henry the Seventh Chapel, and that was around in 1517. So he's the first of the Tudor kings. We have Henry VIII coming after him, obviously. And he got his crown back from Richard the uh, Third in the Battle of Bosworth Fields, and that ended the end of the War of the Roses, which originally started when Richard the Second was usurped. Now the whole of this area is quite a hub of British history. So we've had a lot of coronations and funerals and a lot of major events have happened in and around this area. So as we move towards the end of the Palace of Westminster House of Commons, you can see the big tower here and that's called Victoria Tower. Now this was, when it was built, the tallest building in Europe. And at the bottom is the Sovereign's entrance. So this is the entrance when we have the state open of Parliament that the Queen would go into. What we're looking at in the foreground is... College Green, where often you'll see television reporters reporting about events that are happening in Parliament. In front of that is a Henry Moore sculpture called Knife Edge Two Pieces, which is quite fitting for what may go on with inside politics. Now we cross over and go into Victoria Tower Gardens. Now, as you can see from the insert, only a portion of Victoria Gardens was developed in 1870, the rest would have come later. The sculpture you see in front of you is the Burgess of Calais, which is a Rodin sculpture, and that reflects an incident in 1347 as part of the Hundred Years' War, where Edward I, thanks to his wife, able to save the Burgess from being executed after a siege that was taking place in Calais. Another piece of history we could see as we move further down the park with the Buxton Memorial Fountain, which is a memorial to the emancipation of slaves in 1836. Now, this was originally in Parliament Square, but it got moved to this position after some redevelopments in that area. If you want to make a slight detour at this point, you can turn right and go to St. John Smith Square. Now, this is a church that has been restored as a concert hall, but it actually dates back to... 1728 and it's got a bit of a nickname called the Queen Anne's Footstool because apparently at the time when the architect was asking her how would you like this church in 1728 she kicked over her footstools and said something like that which is why there are four turrets around it. So as we get to the end of the park that's where we stop because we're at Lambeth Bridge, and then we'll be on the last part of this particular. This final part goes from Lambeth Bridge to Westminster Bridge, or Big Ben. And on this last leg, we go across to bridges, we have river views, and we go past the hospital. Now, I'm just going to go quickly over the history, because we've seen some of this before, but this particular route is going along the what is now the Albert Embankment. But as you can see, there's not very much in terms of other houses or industry apart from Lambeth Palace along the route as we see from this map from 1560 Elizabethan times. But if we move on a little bit further into history and we can see the development of the area over time from 1775 up until 1827 you can see there's not a great deal of movement in terms of industry there's starting to be some build up and then we look at the last map down in here in 1869 and we can see that the Albert Embankment has been built and the place for where the hospital is going to be sited is positioned. So if we move just a little bit further on from here we can see how the area would have looked in 1845. This is going to be before they built the Albert Embankment. You can see some of the industry down there towards the the bottom level. We can see the prominent position of Lambeth Palace and then we can see the Westminster Bridge of the old style of Westminster Bridge bring us back to point F which is where Big Ben was currently being built at the time. You can also see out towards the left hand side that in B we've got Millbank Prison so this is where the Tate Britain is today but it was a prison in a penitentiary style which was also used to transport prisoners off to Australia and you'll also see that 
Lambeth Bridge hadn't been built. This is where Horse Ferry Road is today. And there used to be a horse ferry which used to bring you across the, the bridge. But we'll get to that in a, a little while. And so that sort of completes the history for now. And we'll go through and show you what the run looks like as if you were running it at speed. So let's go and see the run. If you remember, we ended up at Lambeth Bridge looking at Thames House. This is where we start the run. So as we come out of the stairs, we cross the road and then we just go along Lambeth Bridge. You'll see that it is painted red. This is to represent the colours of the House of Lords. Westminster Bridge is in green. And you get some great views across both sides of the river with uh, the views of the Houses of Parliament. And when we get to the end, we just turn left down the stairs and we will have Lambeth Palace on our right hand side and a pier on our left. And then we just go uh, to the side of the palace so you get a bit more of a, a view of it. And just as we get to the end by the SOE Memorial, we go turn left and then we go along the side of St. Thomas's Hospital. This is the extent of it, or the old St. Thomas's Hospital, with good views of the House of Commons in front of us. Now you'll see that uh, what this used to look like when we get to the map. So we'll just pop up a map here. This is how the hospital used to look. And in fact, if you look at some of the pictures, you'll see quite similar to some of these older style areas. Uh, the top end area got uh, bombed in the Second World War and was replaced by a modern building, as we see coming up on the, on the right. But as we get towards the end, and we can see Westminster Bridge in front, we see a set of stairs. We go up those, we see the London Eye in front of us and the Old County Hall and it's just in this last leg we just go across the bridge with the Palace of Westminster in front of us and then we just get to the finish which is just by the Portcullis House. So before we go and show you the sites along the way and this is an example of some of them We'll just give you a quick navigation of the route on 360 again. This is going to be pretty quick because it's a relatively straightforward. So this is the view as we would start the run. So with Westminster Bridge in front and Thames House to the right. And we just basically go straight to the end of the bridge. And then this is the stairways down to Albert Embankment. And then we've got the Lambeth Palace in front. Uh, that's the SOE Memorial to this special operations in the first second world war churchill's special troops and then we just go right to the very end so it's just gone straight to the very end of it um and then this is what we see when we get to the stairs so that's where we've just come from seeing the whole of the river and the houses of parliament and then we just go along the stretch of westminster bridge taking one more view of the sights from the bridge don't often see it this uh, empty but that's what you can get if you go early in the morning and then we just finish just outside Westminster station which is where we started from okay so to sort of finish off we have a picture here of Lambeth Bridge and a picture in the bottom corner of what it would have looked like when it was built in 1862 you can see it was a type of suspension bridge this bridge dates from 1932 and this was the crossing that replaced the horse ferry crossing that existed for many years and this is an example of what it might have looked like in the 1800s so there would have been a ferry going across but there were horses which would have moved up and down and basically pulled the the boats from one side to the other as you can see it was a bit further down you've got Lambeth Palace in this particular corner uh, it would have been a bit further down from where the bridge is today. But up until 1750, when Westminster Bridge, this was the only other sort of major crossing point between here and London Bridge. OK, so the next thing we'll, we'll look at is Thames House in front of us. If you have a look at it, you'll see there's two buildings quite similar. So we've got Thames House on the left-hand side, and then we have Imperial Chemical House on the other side. They were used by ICI Chemical Company when they were built in the 1930s, but then they were eventually taken over, or Thames House was taken over by MI5 Security Services. So this would have been the Spooks headquarters for those who watch the television programme. 
A bit further on, we have Lambeth Palace. As uh, we've said before, this is the London residence of the Archbishop of Canterbury. It's pretty old, so it's been there for about 800 years, from about 1200, and it was originally formed. But the gateway we see in front of us dates back to Tudor times, and uh, the Morton Tower is what it's called. If we look at other pictures of Lambeth Palace, it also has a great hall, which was restored in 1663. And at the end of at the end of Lambeth Palace, the, the gardens, there is the library, the Church of England Library, which is quite near St Thomas's Hospital. Quite a modern looking building. There is a church we can see just on the left hand side, and that is St Mary's at Lambeth. And the tower actually dates back, or some parts of it date back to 1377. However, a bit ironically, this church has been converted into a garden museum since 1972. As we go down Albert Embankment, it's quite difficult to see the hospital, but if you were to view it from the other side of the river, this is what the hospital will look like. And you can see that it still retains some of the original buildings towards the right-hand side of it as we look at it. The area towards Westminster Bridge was bombed in the Second World War, so they have a a relatively shiny new building which dates back to 1975. Now St Thomas's Hospital, although it's been in this position since 1871 and it's got real connections to Florence Nightingale, and in fact there's a Florence Nightingale Museum here, the hospital itself actually dates back to 1215, originally out near Guy's Hospital towards the City of London, and it was named after St Thomas Beckett, who was Archbishop of Canterbury from 1162 until he was murdered in 1170. And he had a bit of a conflict with the king at the time, King Henry II, over the privileges of the church and was murdered and then later canonised. So St Thomas's Hospital has seven buildings, one for each day of the week, and it was built in a pavilion style so that improved ventilation and monitoring and um, segregation of infectious diseases. The next picture we look at is what it looked like when it was originally built, but as you can see, it's changed a little bit since then. Do get a, quite an interesting view from the garden outside the new part of St. Thomas's Hospital of the revolving torsion fountain, which was built in 1972. And then as we go across Westminster Bridge, we see the Houses of Parliament in front of us. And as you can see from the insert, it hasn't changed a great deal since this photo was taken over a hundred years ago. The other thing to mention as we go on to Westminster Bridge is Old County Hall, which now houses the London Aquarium, the Shrek Adventure and the London Dungeons. This was the former headquarters of the London County Council and later the Greater London Council. It was built in 1922 in the Edwardian Baroque style by the architect Ralph Knott and it stayed in that position until 1986 when the GLC was abolished by Margaret Thatcher. It later reformed as the London Assembly with the Mayor of London and into a new building at City Hall which is just opposite the Tower of London and as I said earlier the building was transformed to cater for those attractions as well as the Marriott Hotel. So as we close and we get to the end we've got Westminster Bridge which we've talked about before many times. This is the basically the start and the end point of the run and it's a good place to finish so I hope you did enjoy that. I think we have to sort of finish off with a view of Big Ben and I'd like to finish off by showing you what the bell used to sound like when it was ringing every hour on the hour and this was the last time the bell was rung before the renovations and all the scaffolding went up. Anyway I hope you enjoyed this 6.3 kilometer walk. You've seen the difference between the north side and the south side of the river or the west and east really in terms of its orientation in this part of London and I hope you appreciate that the House of Parliament is really the centre of London or a lot of things that went on throughout its history. So I'll close with the 
ringer of the bells.